morning church and praise God that Jesus is at the center of it all right amen I'm very happy to be here this morning and as you look around you can see we have a, a quite a lot of visitors visiting with us today and if I start telling their names I'm pretty confident I will miss some and so I wanted to welcome each and every one of you collectively I just wanted to thank you for taking your time this morning and deciding to worship with us today. And church, as I always say, it's very difficult to walk into a place that they are not familiar with and they have taken a step of faith, a step of courage, and it is the responsibility of the church to meet with them, feel them welcome at home, and, and have uh, a, a communion with them today. So some of you know that I, I, I grew up in Cochin, which is a pure city life. And if you don't know the geography of India, city, Cochin is like Houston where all you have is concrete jungles and I grew up in one of those. But my grandparents, they lived an hour and a half away called a place called Thiruvalla. They had farms and they had cows and they had a lot of play, land and so every opportunity that my brother, my cousins, and I get, we go there and we, we spend a lot of time there. We run around and we climb trees and just like any other young boys will do. And in that scratching heat, we will be sweating like crazy and we come inside the house and we are all trying to get water. But there is this one clay pot sitting at the corner of the dining table and that water is what everybody wants. And nobody can say why that water is so special. It is so cool and it's tasted very well. And for those people who are from Kerala know that I'm talking about this thing called kuja. I don't know how many of you remember that. And that water inside that is very tasty. So I kept wondering why that water is so tasty. I asked my grandmother, hey, why, why is this water different from every other water? And she never gave me a straight answer, but then she one day told, it is the ability of the potter. It is the ability of the potter who made that clay pot. You see, in Bible, God uses several images to describe his relationship with people, and potter and clay is one such. And you have heard a lot of sermons about this topic. It is from the book of Jeremiah, and I know that Pastor Tom Elias once preached on this topic from this pulpit alone. And today my aim is not to give any additional information, but go back to the basis. And in the next 20, 25 minutes, ask ourselves what is our relationship with this potter? Do we really know this potter? Who is he? Do we have a relationship with this potter? And that's what I will, uh, I will be happy if you can get that part as you leave this sanctuary today. And so if you will, please turn your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1 to 6. This book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1 to 6. It's a very familiar passage. I'm reading from the ESP version. And it reads like this. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will let you hear my word. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. And the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do, as it seemed good for the potter to do. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done, declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Behold, behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word of God. Your word is a double-edged sword that can penetrate through any heart, so Father. And today thy people hear thy voice and have a change of heart. 
weak and sinful as I am, O Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, O Father, my rock, my redeemer, and in your son Jesus' name we pray. And the church collectively said, Amen. Amen. You know, for those people who are not familiar with the story of Jeremiah and you do not know the contest, let me give you what led to this passage. You know, God's, Jeremiah was a prophet and God's people during the Jeremiah's days were under the delusion that God would defend them no matter what. They can do whatever they want to do, but the God of God will defend them. And it sounds very similar to the modern American Christian culture, that we can do whatever we want to do as long as we come on Sunday on a church and then the God of grace is going to defend. But to this immense irony, the book of Jeremiah opens with God's threat to the people saying that I will punish them for their deeds. But he just followed with a promise that Jeremiah will be delivered if, if he deliver this news. And as you read through the Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, you can see the ups and downs of those life. And by the time you reach to Jeremiah 17, you can see that Judah has sinned. The sin has been so rampant, just like we see in the city of Houston, just like we see in this country. And Jeremiah is praying. Somebody is standing in the middle and praying for deliverance. And God is wanting to show his power and ability to change people. And he says that, hey, I am the potter, you are the clay, I can change you. But for us to be the clay, to be given in the hands of the potter, we need to know who the potter is, what he wants, what his methodology is, and what he expects us to do. Caleb, are you able to put the slide? Good. The first thing I want to talk about this potter is the potter's influence. In the world of marketing, if you're running a business, you'll know that in the world of marketing, there is this term called influence or marketing. Now, when you open TV or when you turn on the TV, you can see that there are some movie stars, there are some sports people who endorse a certain products. And, and what's so great about them, the whole point is that their followers may be able to follow and will buy this product. And that is why they have endorsements. And in this culture of social media, we have influencer marketing where there will be an influencer who has a, a big followers who has a lot, a lot of followers in Instagram and, and Facebook, and they will say, hey, I like this product, I'm endorsing this, and so their followers will go and buy that product. But the problem with this influencer marketing is that if the credibility of the influencer is lost, then it will affect the product. You see, when we decide to follow somebody, we need to know who that is and what is the credibility of that person. And today, I wanted to introduce you to an influencer, and he has been named the greatest influencer in this world ever since the beginning of the century of the world. He had no Facebook or Instagram account, but he had followers who are willing to die, and his name is Jesus. He has been declared the most influential person in the world over centuries. He has no education but he commanded winds and waves, lands and fishes, Jews and Gentiles, and his words are so powerful. When he healed my son, I checked back to look at his credential and he doesn't have a medical degree, but he still can raise dead people. You see, Colossians 1.16 says that for in him all things were created. And that's exactly what we sang just now. He is at the center of everything. In him, all things are created. Everything is holding under his name, whether thrones or powers, the rulers or authorities. All things are created for him and by him, and he holds everything together. And not for one day, not for two days, but for the ever from the beginning of the world. 
and several people have tried to tarnish that credibility, but they have all gone in vain because he still rules as the greatest influencer in the world. And you can Google it and, and Wikipedia and all those places. Now, he has an autobiography called The Bible. And that book has been the most sold book in the, in the history of the world. A lot of people have tried to discredit that, but it has stood this time, the trials of time. You see, in the last 45 years of my life, I have read at least 1,000 books. Some of them have trained me. Some of them have taught me. Some of them have made me thinking. But this is the only book that has ever transformed me. You see, you see, this book has always transformed and is continuing to transform people. So when we decide to follow somebody, the first thing we need to look at is his influence, the potter's influence. And over the time, we have been proved that his influence has not tarnished. It's not only that we look at his influence, we look at his intention. The potter's intention is not to give a one-way ticket to heaven. And that is the false sense of, of American modern Christianity that once you have Christ, you go to heaven and then you are done. And I don't see that in the Bible. The purpose of Christian life is not to have a one-way ticket. By, by the way, that is a big thing, but after that there is this continual renewal so you can be used in the hands of God. You see, a potter makes different types of vessels. In 2 Timothy 2, it says that there are some that is made out of, out of gold and some that is made out of silver, some that is made out of clay. Some are made for special purposes. Some are made for common use. But that vessel only has use if we keep it cleansed. And that potter makes that vessel for a particular purpose. And the purpose is different. And that is what is called calling. And what's happening in the churches today, even into our church, I'm sorry to say even in our church, is that we accept Jesus as a personal savior and then we live a mediocre life because we are very complacent with our life. And we forget to know what our calling is. And we forget that we have a calling in our life. Because you and I are not created in the image of Christ for something vain. And Ephesians 2.10 says that you are created for a great workmanship. Today the church is full of ears and rears but not enough hands and feet. And the intention of this potter is to make you stand on the life final day just like the image of Jesus. So we have this potter who has the biggest influence. Then you have the potter who have the greatest intention. But what is the ingredient that this potter is going to use? And the pot, that is the only ingredient that the potter uses the clay. Now if you know anything about clay, I've never seen somebody says that I'm so fond of clay. I've never heard that. Have you? Oh, I'm going to take some clay and put it in our house. It's so good to see. I've heard a lot of people in the financial world, we hear a lot of people collecting things. They have gold and you have silver. I've never said that I'm collecting clay. But that is the only ingredient that the potter needs. That is something that is not good for anything. That is not good for anything. But then the potter takes this clay, and if you know anything about pottery, they will take you through a three-step process called slipping, setting, and separating. And that's exactly what God does through a newborn creation of Christian and Christian. But he'll take it, he'll, he'll settle it, and then he will separate it from the world. If you read, I, I, I highly encourage you to read the, total, the doctrine of total depravity. And when you read the total doctrine of depravity, you know that the, the condition of man is sinful. Isaiah 53 says that he has wandered astray. His desires are sinful. He's spiritually blind. And it doesn't, it doesn't start with you and I. It started at the Garden of Eden. 
and we stand guilty in front of God. But that's exactly what God needs. And I'm sure you have heard that God does, is not looking for extraordinary people. He is looking for ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And the only thing, and you know, when I sit across people, they say, I'm looking for a job. And they took a resume, they look at all the, all the credentials. And they're writing, they're, they're putting their best foot forward in a resume. They are putting all their, 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 their successes in their resume. But this is the only place that I know. This is the pottery is the only place I know who you have to go there with all your failures. The resume never said that I did all these things. The resume says that I cannot even stand in front of you. I'm spiritually blind. I'm wandered astray. And that is the clay that God is looking for. And that is why time and time again, the Bible says that come just as you are. Come just as you are. There is no professor suffice. The doctor, engineer, none of those professors and any junior, senior suffices doesn't happen. You are the clay. I am the potter. I mean, God is the potter. And here we are trying to follow his footsteps. So here you have a potter who is the greatest influencer, who has the best intention, who will take the worst ingredient, and then he uses some instruments to convert it into the, what he wants to do. And the first instrument he uses is a shovel. Right? All of you know what a shovel is. It is used to dug things out of it. Yeah, when we say yes to Jesus, the first thing he takes is a shovel. He dig all the things out of our heart using this thing called Holy Spirit. Oh, I don't like that. He brings everything outside, which I don't, myself don't like to see. But that is the separation process. The shovel, he uses the shovel to pull things out. The sinful nature has to go. And he uses the Holy Spirit. And so once the potter takes the clay with the shovel, he puts it on the table, and then he uses one of his best tools, and that is called a mallet. You know what a mallet is? You beat the, 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 the life out of that clay. Why is that? Because the clay cannot have any air particles inside trapped. And when you have air particles trapped in that, that it becomes weak. And so you and I, as the raw clay, God will take it, dig it out, and put it on the table, and takes through trials and tribulations and suffering. And that whole point, some of them is our consequences, some of them is to try to refine it as the image of Jesus. Because that air bubbles needs to go. You may look at it and say, so God is punishing me, but actually not. He is trying to do this refining process to make you what he wants to use in your life. Amen. And I don't like that either. My wife and I, we have gone through enough trials in life, and I don't like that either. And I don't think anybody, I've never heard somebody say that, bring all the suffering into my life. In fact, we pray the other way around. And this process, if you know the pottery, is not a one-day process. This takes weeks for that air particles to leave that clay. So you see, in the Christian world, we call it sanctification. So you have this salvation where you accept Jesus Christ, and then they have to go through the sanctification process before we get to the justification and glorification. But again, once he takes his shovel, he takes this, this mallet and takes the air drops out and then he uses this, this big tool called the wheel. And I'm assuming that some of you have seen how the potter runs, spins the wheel. This wheel is going at a faster space. He takes his clay, put it closer to the wheel. And what is the nature of the clay? To go away from the wheel. And that is in physics called centrifugal force. 
My son specifically told me that don't talk about homeschooling in school during Sunday, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs> so you have the centrifugal force, so it is going to take the nature of the clay is to go away from the wheel. And that's who we are. The pressures of life, the pleasures of world will take us away from the wheel. But then there is this tender hand supporter that keeps us coming back. And it is called grace. It is called grace. And every time we go away from the center of the wheel, there is this graceful hand. In case, my hands are covering you. I am with you. I am going behind you. I am in front of you. And I am there. And every time there is the constant hand of grace that is covering us, we are going through the process of molding to the vessel that God wants us to become. But a clay has a choice not to get inside. And that is that beautiful picture of God taking this ugly clay and making us something beautiful through his tender hands. You see, we saw that the spotter's influence is great. His intentions are good. He uses you and I as the ingredient. And then he uses his instruments. But do you know the outcome of that? He's going to give an identity. That he's going to give an identity. The word of God says that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. The old has gone. The old has gone. That in Christ you are a new creation. But that is not an overnight process. It takes time. And the only thing that Clay needs to do, the only thing that Clay needs to do is accept the invitation of the potter. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, says that, Come unto me, all you are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He is the way, the truth, and life. Revelation 3, 20 says that, Behold, I stand before you, and I'm constantly knocking on you. He who opens the door, I will come inside, and I will start my transformation work. I've never heard one person say that Jesus has cast me out because he doesn't. That is not his nature. I wanted to take all those who are listening to me to 22 years, behind, back, going back 22 years. There was a little scared kid in the city of Cochin. In the darkness, he was waiting there without hope and light. But on April 21st year 2000, the, the God of the heaven, with his mercy in his eyes, just to fulfill the laws and the prophet, the, guy, the person who, who was born out of a virgin, who decided to come from the, the throne of endless glory to the cradle of or in the dirt, revealed his kingdom to me and redeemed me because of the suffering he had on the cross. And while he was suffering on the cross, he saw me and I praise God for that. 22 years back, there was this kid who was scared, who was addicted to alcohol, who used to smoke 15 cigarettes a day. And the people said that there is no hope. The family is despised. And in the dark dungeon days, hearing my father preach, I decided, I understood the influence of this potter. I learned that this potter has good intentions in my life. And I figured out that I am the clay. And I submitted my, myself into that hand instruments of God. 22 years later, I'm not a finished product. And by far, I'm the most sinful person sitting and listening to me right now. But you know what? I can now see a glimpse of that vessel being created. A glimpse of that vessel being created. It's far from perfect. 
but at least I can see the hand of feet of Jesus, the tender hand of Jesus guiding me to attain something greater than what I ever thought in life. But the suffering that my wife and I had gone through is not small. And sometimes we never liked it. But guess what? Everything is coming. The pieces, the puzzle pieces are coming together as we see the end picture closer and closer. The worship team can come back. There are two types of people listening to me today. The first set of person, they have accepted that they are the clay and they said they wanted to be used by the potter but when they started using the instruments they decided to take a pause. They are very comfortable with the American life. The richest country in the world with the best jobs and if you, if you know, I don't know how many of you know that Fort Bend County was, was counted as the second richest county in Texas now. In the comforts of the world that you have forgotten that God has a huge purpose in your life and you are wasting away your life because you refuse to be under the instruments of God. And if that is you today, I would like you to come forward and, and submit yourselves into the altar when the songs are going on. But then there is a second group who have never, never understood that they are clay. But they, they know that their, their life is not full. <clears throat> they have been used by other people. Other people have taken advantage of them. They look at themselves and say, Sir, have they, at this age they have not accomplished anything in life. They are financially struggling. They are health-wise struggling. There is a lot of problems that's going on. And they are sick and tired of living sick and tired. But I have good news for you that you are the clay and a potter is standing right there for you. All you have to do is to accept the invitation that was extended to you. And if you belong to that category, I would like you to come forward when they sing the song because the answers are found in the altar of the God. Now, this church is just a building. There's nothing special about this building. There is nothing special about me or the pastor or anybody. It's nothing to do with any people. It is between you and God. I don't know how many of you heard that. I'm sure that was in the WhatsApp. A 40 year old, some of our relatives, he passed away at the age of 40 and we got the news last week. We are not promised tomorrow. Today, today may be our last day in this world. So, I pray that God, that you take this opportunity and accept this invitation, either to be used by God or to start a new life. And if you are struggling with any sickness or anything, all the answers are found at the altar. The pastors are ready to pray for you, but the answers are at the altar. Now, why should you come forward? I have attended several weddings in my life and not once the wedding happened at the back side. All the weddings happened right in the front. Why? <coughs> Excuse me. The groom will be waiting. The bride will be walking. And that is the symbol of Jesus waiting and the clay walking to the portal. <coughs> Excuse me. So I pray today the pastor is going to come and conclude in prayer. And if you belong to any one of this category, understand that we believe and serve the greatest influencer in the world who has the best intention, who uses you, the ugly clay, as the ingredient with his instruments to create a new identity. Only if you accept the invitation. May God bless each and every one of you.